morning friends it is a beautiful sunny day the birds are chirping the grass is changing from brown to green it just feels like spring is really finally here today i want to share with you my personal favorite spring books some recent favorites and then ones that i also go back to time and time again books that transport me to cottages in the countryside gardening and the London season in Regency England and fantasy stories with flower magic. And then at the end of the video, I have a very exciting announcement about my spring sweatshirts that I made. I'm calling it the Spring Enthusiast Collection and I'm very excited to share it with you. So let's get started with the books. This one is everything I could have wanted in a cozy cottage core fantasy. It has major Studio Ghibli vibes and that is Flower Heart by Catherine Bakewell. It's about a girl named Clara who has this magic but she hasn't learned how to master it yet. She lives in a cottage with her father and she ends up being taught by her childhood friend in a way that is different from most other people who have magic. You know, I actually don't want to tell you too much about like the story and the synopsis of each book. I want to just give you like the vibes and the aesthetic. Like if you tell me a book is Studio Ghibli meets Pride and Prejudice, that's all I need to know to pick it up. I don't need to know what the story is about. So that's kind of going to be in the vein of how I recommend these as well. This has cottages, tea parties, flower magic, village markets, and like apothecary vibes, but all using flowers and the cottage core vibes are just immaculate. And then I have Sinister Spring by Agatha Christie. I read her books as often as I can, but what better time to read her spring themed short stories than during spring. Plus the cover of this one is just so perfect if you want to add to your book collection of beautiful spring books. I don't know if they sell this one on Amazon. Actually, I think they do, but it does ship from Book Depository. So if you can't find it on your Amazon, you can definitely find it on Book Depository. This one is a very recent read. I actually just finished it two days ago and it's not set during spring. It is set during summer, but it's set on the coast in Northern California. So it's rainy and it's chillier weather. So I think it's perfect. It is Lost Coast Literary by Ellie Alexander. This is a book for book lovers. This book is so charming. You should pick this up just knowing that it is a book about books and writing books and our favorite characters in books and what they mean to us. And our main character ends up inheriting this Victorian sprawling estate on the California coastline. And as she's going through her grandmother's items in her library, she finds these manuscripts and realizes that as she's editing them, because she's an editor from New York, that these edits aren't just edits in the book. They're applying to people in real life. It is extremely cozy. The writing is so easy to digest. I read this in almost one sitting. Please read it. It's so good. Okay, cottagecore friends, listen up. If you have never read anything by James Harriet, his books were cottagecore before cottagecore was ever a thing. James Harriet was a vet in Yorkshire, England. I believe it was Yorkshire. And his stories chronicle daily life being a vet in rural England. So if you wish to be transported to rural England with farm animals and daily life in a country cottage, this is your book. I really love this one. This is Old Herbaceous by Reginald Arkell. This is a gardening memoir. It's so charming and cozy. It really feels like you're reading a journal of a gardener, which is what I love about it. Summer that year ran through into winter without a break. The rain fell, lawns cracked, and you could have swept the bed of the country book with a broom. It's set in England during the Victorian period and it's just absolutely lovely. Now moving on to Regency romance novels, which has been my absolute obsession session this spring. These are my two favorites that I have read so far this spring and I will absolutely be going back to. The first one is A Lady's Guide to Fortune Hunting by Sophie Irwin. So this one is set during spring, right at the beginning of the London season. So I love when the books actually include writing about it being spring and describing the flowers and the weather. So I really like that about it. But it's just so fun because it's kind of a different take on Regency romance. It's more funny, more quirky, laugh out loud, but it also has like a really sweet love story with some pining and it's just, oh, it's phenomenal. It's about our main character named Kitty 
who goes to London to find a husband because if she does not, all of her belongings and the house that she lives in with her sisters will be taken away from her because her parents have died. She doesn't even care if it's a love match, she just wants to get married. So she finds someone that she's interested in, but then his brother figures out that she is essentially just a fortune hunter. So he sees what Kitty is really doing and that's where things start to get interesting. This was a five star read, guys. It's so, so good. Don't tell A Lady's Guide to Fortune Hunting, but I think I might actually like this one a little bit more. My heart belongs to this book. This was really just the perfect Regency romance, in my opinion. Oh, and I should mention that this one and A Lady's Guide to Fortune Hunting are both closed door romances, meaning there are no steamy scenes. It's just more wholesome. This is Miss Newbery's List by Megan Walker, and it is set specifically during Spring. This one is about a girl named Rosalind and she is about to get married to someone that she doesn't really know but it will benefit the families mutually if they enter into marriage. So as she's spending her last few weeks she has a list of things that she wants to do before she gets married. She thinks that it will make her feel more accomplished and ready to be with somebody else after she's kind of lived herself. Some of the things on her list are like eating as many sweets and desserts as she can in one sitting as possible. So there's this scene where they go to a bakery, they buy out like the entire bakery and go have a picnic and they eat so much that they're just laying there sick. It's so cute. And then learning how to swim. A lot of it is outdoorsy. And the romance, I don't know, I'm not gonna tell you anything about it. Please just read it. But like I said, if you're looking for spice, this is not gonna deliver. But if you're looking for wholesome, sweet vibes, it definitely will. This is like a sweet treat in the form of a book. And then I have The Wisteria Society of Lady Scoundrels by India Holton. I don't even really know what genre to put this book in because it is so many genres. It takes place in the Victorian period, but there are pirates and magic and secret tea societies and flying houses. There's so much going on and it's so funny, but there's also a very steamy, actually, is it very steamy? I don't remember the steam level on this, but I know it's open door, pretty sure. It is a wild ride, but it is so freaking fun. I laughed out loud so many times while reading this. I don't like to read the backs in my videos because I think that can be boring, but I just have to read you these couple sentences because it describes it so well. Like the other members of the Wisteria Society crime sorority, she flies around England drinking tea, blackmailing friends, and acquiring treasure by interesting means. Sure, she has a dark and traumatic past, and an overbearing aunt, but all things considered, it's a pleasant existence until the men show up. It's so good. Now, for more classic Regency romance, I have to recommend Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen as my favorite Jane Austen book to read during spring. Everybody's so different. I know a lot of people who like to read Emma during spring or Pride and Prejudice during spring. But for me, I really just like the description of the countryside and the cottage that the Dashwood sisters live in. It feels very springy to me. So this one is my favorite and it's not too long either. Emma is quite a bit longer. So I think this one is a great one to dive into for springtime. And then we have the queen that is Georgette Hare. They are going to be different from anything you've read if you've never read Georgette Hare before. Georgette Hare wrote these in 1932 and... 1926 but she wrote regency in a way that makes you think that she lived during the regency period when writing these they read very much like something actually written back then my personal favorite is arabella but i recently read these old shades and although i didn't love it the first half throughout the second half i couldn't put it down i really really enjoyed it they all have such different plot lines um, but there's always romance and the vibes are really just immaculate with these. They can be daunting because they read a bit more like a classic, but if you've ever wanted to pick one up, I recommend Arabella because I found that one the easiest for me to get through and then ended up really enjoying. <laughs> Please pardon the sweatiness 
going on here that actually surprisingly segues perfectly into the sponsor of today's video, which is Native. I have been absolutely obsessed with and just loving all things Regency romance this spring. So I started going on what I call Elizabeth Bennett walks every morning where I put on a dress because that's required. Lizzie always had dresses on and I just go out and I walk, <laughs> hence the sweatiness. But thanks to Native, I get to smell like lavender and rose and it just elevates the experience that much more. It's my way of romanticizing it. I still get to smell so good even though I'm sweaty. So let me tell you a bit more about Native. So Native has plastic-free deodorant. I really, really love the ingredients in this as well. Simple ingredients like coconut oil and shea butter. It's aluminum-free, paraben-free, it's cruelty-free and vegan. It's not sticky and it feels dry when applying it. Not dry, but just it's not sticky. <laughs> Native offers all day odor protection, 72 hours of protection. I have lavender and rose, which is my favorite. Cotton and lily, which it smells like clothes drying outside in the spring. Oh my gosh, I love that one too. And then I have unscented as well. Native also just released their candy shop collection and they sent us this candy shop body wash, which I don't know if you can tell, but it's very much like almost gone because me and Jared have been using this almost every day. It smells exactly like this sour candy. They did release a wide collection of different candy shop inspired scents like gummy berries, sweet cinnamon hearts, sour berry belts, these ones, and strawberry and vanilla taffy. That sounds so good. If you would like to try Native, you can use the code DARLING2 to get 20% off your first purchase at Native. The offer is available site-wide, but only for a limited time, so stock up and save. Again, the code is DARLING2, and I will have the link down in the description box. All right, back to Future Desi with the book recommendations. Okay, moving on to like classics, even though some of those were classics as well. Um, we're not in the romance genre anymore. I guess one of these kind of is, wow, this is not as organized as I should have made it. Another one that I have been rereading almost every spring is The Enchanted April by Elizabeth von Arnhem. I really love to listen to this on audiobook when I go on walks outside because the nature riding is so beautiful. It's about these women who go to rent out a castle during spring. It's a castle on the coast in Italy. It's covered in flowers. And these women who kind of led these, you could say like boring lives in England, rediscover their love for living. Of course, there's romance as well. There's friendship. There are like some slower, more boring parts, but overall, I really, really enjoy this one. Okay, and then moving on to classics that don't really involve romance as much. First up, I have to recommend Anne of Green Gables. This book does start, I believe, in June. I'm sure most of you know the story of Anne of Green Gables, and you don't need to hear someone else tell you that you should read it, but really, hear me out. Pick up this book, go outside under a tree, bring like a, a quilt or a blanket, and then maybe like a snack or some berries, and tea if you can, and just let yourself get lost in the first couple chapters. Just give it a chance and romanticize the experience because I feel like that's kind of how Anne of Green Gables is meant to be enjoyed, like out in nature. I kind of feel like that's how Anne would enjoy reading books as well. I feel like she would go to a special reading spot to enjoy and that's what I like to do with these books. And then it would not be a spring recommendations video without mentioning Brambley Hedge. This specifically is the spring story. Opening this book is like stepping into a cottagecore dream. I think some people would say these are kids books, but I've said before and I'll say it again, that I don't believe in age for certain books. All I believe in is an interest or an appreciation. For example, if there's a kid's book and the illustrations are beautiful, is that like saying only kids enjoy beautiful illustrations? You know, you know what I'm saying? I absolutely enjoy beautiful artwork and the artwork in Rambly Hedge is so beautiful. How can you not appreciate it? And no matter what age you are, it's about these little mice that just live the cottage core dream life. They're baking, going on picnics by the stream, crafting, and just enjoying their best quiet little lives. Definitely worth picking up a copy just to look at the illustrations. 
And then I have to mention, I've mentioned these so many times before, so if you've seen me mention these a lot, I apologize for the constant repetition, but I really just love them so much. These are the Cottage Tales of Beatrix Potter. They take place in Beatrix Potter's cottage in the Lake District in England. And in these books, the animals talk. They are so cozy. If you want cottage core books, this series, I just feel like is the most cottage core thing I've ever read. Talking animals like cats and mice. And then there are mysteries to be solved too. I love these, I love them so much. And then I want to recommend some coloring books. They're not novels, but they're still books. So it fits with the theme of the video. I've really been loving the Creative Haven coloring books. They're really cheap. You can get these on Amazon for like $5. So I have Spring Scenes and then also Country Kitchen Charm. I feel like they're full of pictures that you would like see on Pinterest. Like, look, and they're just perfect to color in when you put on an audiobook, want to relax. And then I absolutely love, this is like my new favorite thing, the Bobby Goods coloring book. This is technically the fall winter edition, but I know she just released her spring summer books from last year on her website. I'll link it down below if you're interested. But I just love that the illustrations are very like simple to color in. I don't like when coloring books are way too intricate because it intimidates me. I think these would be so fun to bring on a picnic with friends. Imagine you go to get Starbucks, you get your drinks, you set up a blanket, you bring some markers or some colored pencils like you and a friend you and your dog and you can just color away while you listen to some music listen to a spring audiobook this is also from a small business so if you want to support a small business and get into coloring Bobby goods okay those are all the books now I want to introduce you to my spring merch. I still don't know what to call it. You guys gave me a bunch of ideas. Like one of your ideas was literary laundry, which I think is so cute. Give me more ideas down below and then like other people's ideas so I can see which one you guys like the most. Oh, I'm so excited. Let me introduce you to the spring enthusiast collection of sweatshirts. First one is this beautiful mint green sweatshirt. I am in love with this color. And it says, I'd rather be at Green Gables. This was one of the very highly requested phrases that you guys asked for when I asked for what to put on my spring sweatshirts. So I really hope you guys like this one and love it as much as I do. Okay, and then this one is my pride and joy. I love it and I'm so proud of it. This is the spring enthusiast sweatshirt. And you can't see super well in this lighting, but there is a little embroidered daisy right next to where it says spring enthusiast. And I love this baby blue color. I'm so, so happy we were able to get a baby blue that wasn't super bright or saturated. I love this color. These are naturally a bit baggy. Um, they're unisex, so they're not very tight. I don't think you would necessarily need to size up. Okay, now this is actually just a sample that we got from our supplier and the thread that they used for the embroidery wasn't quite the right color. So we're going to be changing it for the actual launch. And on the website, I'll include a picture of what the thread color actually is going to be. So you can't really tell what this one says very well, but I really do like the pink color of it. On the front, it says most ardently. That was another highly requested phrase that you guys asked for. As I'm in my Regency romance era, I am just so thrilled <laughs> that you guys wanted something from Pride and Prejudice on one of the sweatshirts. I will be living in this this spring. And this one is probably my favorite in terms of everything. I like the color. I love the color of the embroidery. I love what it says. You guys came up with this one. So I feel like this is a collaboration between me and you. And I'm so excited for it. Okay, this is the Kindred Spirits Club sweatshirt. I just can't help but get emotional over the thought that I could be walking somewhere and run into one of you wearing this and I could be wearing it. And it's like we're in this like 
secret club or society together of kindred spirits. This is like our club uniform, if you will. I'm just so excited if any of you guys buy this one because this one's just so special to me that you guys came up with the idea of kindred spirits club because you feel like I'm a kindred spirit and I feel like you guys are my kindred spirits. So this one is probably the most special to me. This is a size medium and I just cannot be more thrilled with how it came out. I love it so much. And then I actually have something else to share with you. During winter, I designed winter sweatshirts, but my chronic illnesses flared up and then we got busy with moving and I was never able to launch them. So I know that this probably isn't the time to launch these, but I'm just gonna launch them with the spring sweatshirts. For any of you who want to get one now to wear during winter, or for those of you in the Southern hemisphere who are going into fall and winter, um, I just wanna share them with you because I'm really proud of them. This is, okay, it looks a lot darker on the camera than it actually does in real life. It is a deep forest green that says winter enthusiast and then this one is my personal favorite I relate to it the most I guess you could say this one says in my hibernation era which I wore this all winter if you look back on my Instagram stories all the time I had some of you asking what sweatshirt is that what does that say on your sweatshirt it was this I was wearing this all winter myself and then you guys requested this phrase the most when I asked on Instagram what phrase to put on a winter sweatshirt. It was just submission after submission of this exact phrase. And that is, I smell snow, which is inspired by Lorelai from Gilmore Girls. If you know, you know. This blue is definitely more of like a snow winter blue in my opinion. I'll show you the difference between the spring one and the winter one. So these are them next to each other. This is the blue of the winter one, and this is the blue of the spring one. In terms of when they will be launched, Jared is finishing up some details on the website, but right now we're aiming for the first week of April for the launch. As soon as I know from Jared that things are ready to go, I will put a launch date on my Instagram stories. So definitely follow me on my Instagram if you have an Instagram. If you're not on social media, I totally understand. I will have my Instagram account linked down in the description box. It's just really easy to post a story for you guys to see right away on my Instagram, but then I will also post in the community tab here on YouTube when I know the exact date and that I will link the website and put all of the information there for you guys but just put it in your calendar now for the first week of April I probably need to recheck this but for now I'm gonna say because I'm pretty confident that we will be offering sizes extra small through 4XL and international shipping will be available I'm so excited you guys I have imposter syndrome so it's hard for me to even imagine any of you purchasing these, but if you do, just know that I am so grateful. If you do happen to purchase, please tag me in any photos that you take on Instagram. I cannot wait to see you wearing any of these, especially the Kindred Spirits Club. I might cry if I see one of you guys wearing that. I know that a lot of you are not going to purchase one because you're like, why would I get a sweatshirt when it's warm outside? But where I live, it's definitely still like in like the 50s and 60s for most of spring. So definitely cold, especially in the evenings. So I wear sweatshirts a lot. Um, if you're somewhere that's really warm, I apologize. I might do t-shirts for summer, but I'm not sure yet. I don't know about you though. Jared always has the house so freaking cold. So I'm constantly wearing sweatshirts when I'm reading in the evening or editing. So thank you for being here, friends. Thank you so much for your never ending ongoing support. I'm constantly speechless when I think about you guys being here and you guys watching the videos that I create. Thank you. And if you have any spring book recommendations for me of your favorite spring books, I would love to hear. I have a constant list on my phone of books that you guys recommend for me. Anyway, I love you. Thank you for being here and watching this and I will see you again very soon. Bye friends.